Okay, so I am going to be modeling critical, explaining why I would model critical thinking um, using some of the strategies that I've learned so far in this course. Um, first off, the content area and grade level that I will be studying um, and hopefully teaching in the future would be high school math, so that is what I'll be talking about in this video. Um, and so the problem or topic I'll be exploring is just, um, well, math and more so, I have more so of an example of the problem is, um, for example, if I were to give students um, in a problem saying using rising and falling temperatures, predict the average height and the average high and low temperatures for five different places um, five years from now. So the way I see it is modeling this critical thinking is giving these students these like questions that are going to have them um, analyze and collaborate with one another and use different strategies to find these um, different temperatures five years from now for five different places anywhere um, on the earth. So um, the answers are going to be varied, the, the um, temperatures are going to be varied, and I feel that this problem is going to allow for a lot of different critical thinking um, to take place. And so some of the strategies that I would use, I chose two. Um, I would either use crisis decision simulator or critical debate. Um, strategy for this um, specific problem and just for math in general I feel that the crisis decision simulator is really good for students to use um, well for us as teachers to get these students um, for them to not have to worry about whether or not this these questions and these problems are based off their own um, lives outside of school basically and so it allows them to not think of what they would do in a situation personally but because it doesn't entail to a specific student these questions are allowing them to you know think outside the box and like think about um what would be the best decision and the best case scenario for these problems um rather than worrying about okay, their personal, like, say, for example, like, financial status, or whatever it may be, like, oh, they can't do this, or they can't, like, that wouldn't work for this problem, like, so using questions and problems that allow for students to just see it as a bystander rather than personally, like, being invested in the problem is, I think, a great way for students to be um, more engaged as well as give 100% as into finding the best possible answer for the certain problem or topic that we're, we would be talking about. And then also, I really, really like critical debate. Um, I feel that that strategy is super, super good for um, allowing kids to, one, be able to ex um, explain their point of view and their perspective on a question, as well as um, hearing their peers' viewpoints and just getting a lot of feedback. Um, and I don't know, personally, I feel that as a, when I was a student and still a student now, like I used to do debates um, for school and high school. And as much as it took from me getting up and talking in front of a class, I feel that it benefited me in a lot of ways because it one got me out of my comfort zone, two allowed me to critically think of um, basically points that are strong enough to be able to like debate with others about a certain topic. And you know, obviously, like if it's a debate of two teams, two sides, then obviously you guys are going fighting for your your viewpoint and what you're debating on to be true and they're de debating that their 
thought process is true. And so it's just a great way, in my opinion, to have students um, just kind of, kind of go back and forth basically on their views and what they found and what other people have found. And so um, I feel that, especially with math too, like there's multiple ways you can find an answer to a problem usually. And so having that debate is able to, is allowing the kids to be able to, you know, work through the strategy that they found most beneficial for them and how they found the answer. And then being able to explain that to the class and their peers um, just is a super good way for me um, to be able to get those kids engaged and um, wanting to do the work to to find these different ways um so that's kind of just like the two that i would use within like math as a whole and just kind of like when it comes to certain problems that i create for the kids in formal class i would create certain problems that you know like allow for those strategies to be used and integrated within the lesson um, so a couple assumptions that would probably come from the specific question that I explained in the beginning would be our first assumption is automatically, I feel like some, some students will automatically just go to a single formula and believe that that's just like the only way to like find it. For example, the quadrilateral formula, that's probably a basic one that they'll just like automatically just be like, okay, I'm going to use that. Um, or they may use like the Pythagorean theorem or like just if that specific formula is not explained within the question or the problem, they may assume that, you know, one is just going to work for this problem without kind of testing out the other ones. Another assumption could be that they would think, okay, if a place is called now in this month, it'll be the same five years from now. but that assumption is like we don't know that because one we don't know the future better but then also we can't just say that we have to figure out how to find the average high and the average low temperatures like um because it may change over the years or so um, but that could be an assumption that students may have is that you know right now in october it's 70 degrees and the low is 48 so um in five years, same time, same month, same day, it's going to be a little 48, but we can't just assume that right off the bat, but I figure that would be another assumption that would come from this problem. And so I did have a couple options of the thought processes to um, help students um, with these assumptions and just like in general with the problem. And so my first option was to see the different values that we're working with and then choose the equation would be a good option to do um, instead of just assuming that one of these equations works for you. I would have the students, you know, kind of break down the question and break down the problem as to what, what are we looking for? We're looking at rising and falling temperatures. Okay, we're going to find average height, average lows, um, five different places. So let's, you know, break that down and and get our five different places in the five years from now. So obviously we're gonna be like multiplying by five to like, so just kind of like breaking it down and then seeing which formula would probably fit that best would be how I would go about, you know, the thought process of this problem. Um, a second option I would probably do would be to let the students like you know, look up past temperatures to be able to like kind of see, okay, I know we're trying to find the next five in the future, but how about we also research and analyze the different data from the past five um, years? That way we can kind of like see, okay, the past five years it was this, and we can kind of see if there's a pattern or um, if there's like a trend in the temperatures over the last five years to now, and then that'll help us predict, you know, the next um, five years from currently. 
Um, and then also another option is just, it may seem basic, but just discussing with their peers on what they, what their thoughts are and what their findings are, because this question can allow for, honestly, all the students could have five different places from every single person in the classroom because it can be five different places from anywhere in the world. So some one student could have five random places and have not one similar place of another student. So like obviously that's 10 different places that, you know, the student, the class is working with. So just having that discussion and that opportunity to have a discussion within their thought processes to kind of like see, you know, okay, like, how are you working through yours? Or like, how are you doing this? Like, that's kind of like a great way um, to get their thought process working and um, to also like model this critical thinking for them within the questions and within the class. And I feel that when it comes to modeling critical thinking, I find that it's super important that me as a teacher, I am modeling that for the students rather than just kind of like personally modeling it to myself and like in my head, like and analyzing stuff and like what I'm seeing and everything. I think it's important to, you know, communicate that to my students as well, even as a teacher. Like I want my students to know that I'm working through, I have my own perspectives on this question and I'm going to work through this problem just like they are. And, um, you know, like we're all going to work together. And so I feel like that's like a great way for um, me to be able to, you know, build that relationship and that um, bond with my kids, as well as like them knowing that, you know, I'm I'm just like them in, in ways that when it comes to critical thinking, like I have my own views on stuff, they have their own views on things. And so like being able to like discuss that and have open discussion with the students, is like something that I really, really want um, for my future class and just feel that um, it's only going to bring positive things, I hope, um, when it comes to teaching them and just having them be more open and engaged because I know like in my high school experience like I didn't have many teachers that did that and so because of that I feel like that's why I have this I've had this fear of speaking in front of people or just like um, doing videos, but now that I've learned a little more about like critical thinking and through this program, I feel a little more comfortable, and so I'm grateful for that. But I also want to know that I I know that I want to instill that in my students in the future, and so yeah, that's kind of just what I have on this topic, this subject, um, this content area, and this grade level within high school. And I hope that I can integrate this in the future with my actual class when I actually do become a math teacher. Um, but yeah, that's all I got.